guys, it's me. We are back for the fourth chapter of Book Scavenger. Again, I can't say this enough. I am hooked on this book. Um, I am so excited. Um, so we are on chapter four. What just happened in the last chapter was Emily solved this uh, little uh, puzzle that someone had sent her in a bucket to her room, which like, that sounds like every child's dream to have a pulley bucket system in their room with their neighbor, so she thinks she knows who it is. So we'll find out if she's right. Here we go, chapter four. Later that afternoon, Emily went to the U-Haul to grab her book scavenger notebook, but the empty cab reminded her that she'd already taken in her stack of books and papers. She checked her new room, but the notebook was nowhere to be found. She went through the apartment, panic, panic simmering when the notebook remained lost. This was not just any notebook. It was volume nine of her book scavenger notebooks. It was where she wrote the rough drafts for the book reviews she posted on Book Scavenger. It was where she wrote journal entries about memorable book hunts. It was where all her ideas for puzzles and ciphers and hiding books exploded on the page and where she tried to work out the clues for the books she was hunting. Combined with her online profile, it bas basically documented her entire life. She ran outside and threw open the U-Haul door one more time. She dug out a granola bar wrapper and the, a pen from underneath the seat, but no notebook. The panic was now in a full frenzied boil when someone said, you set a new record. Emily spun around. That boy, James, stood on the porch. The scarf and goggles from before were gone, but he still wore the reindeer antlers. Otis would never have solved that one as fast as you did. But then again, Otis always said he was allergic to numbers. Are you speaking reindeer? Emily asked. This kid made no sense and she was impatient to get back to her notebook hunt. Otis, he lived in the apartment before you. He was more of a word puzzle guy than a math puzzle guy. He moved to the East Coast to be near his grandchildren. Otis was great, don't get me wrong, but I'm glad to have someone my age moving in. At least you look my age. Are you in seventh grade too? I'm James, by the way. James shifted his weight and Emily noticed an important detail she'd overlooked before. Her notebook was in his hands. Where did you find that? She charged up the concrete steps, pulled the notebook from him and hugged it to her chest. The antler bells tink tinkled lightly as James stepped back. With a touch of defensiveness, he said, It was on the ground outside your door. I knocked earlier, but nobody answered. I was going to send it down to you in the bucket, but then I looked out the window and you just looked like you'd lost something, and... Emily didn't know what to make of this guy. He wore reindeer antlers and delivered puzzles challenges via an old rusty sand pill. He seemed genuinely offended that she might have thought he'd stolen her notebook, but he still seemed friendly. Even the cow look on the back of his neck stuck or the back of his head stuck up like a wig waving hello a wing waving hello are you hypnotized by my hair james asked emily felt her face heat up but james waved her off it's cool he likes the attention he his name is steve your cowlick is cowlick is named steve i was going to name him geronimo but that seemed ridiculous james said emily laughed her skepticism chipped away nobody would take you seriously with a cowlick named geronimo Exactly, James said. Then he added, that puzzle you were working on was interesting. Did you like the one I sent in the bucket? The magic square? You had me stumped with the flamingo theater. I was like, what in the world is a... Emily's brain caught up with her rambling mouth. Wait, how did you know I was working on a puzzle? The spiral spine of her notebook dug into her fingers. She, slipped, she flipped the notebook open, irritation rising with every whipped over page. Beneath the Furzu Borg cipher was unfamiliar block letter handwriting. Third bench down the pier. Emily gasped. You solved it? You almost had it. You just missed a letter. She didn't miss a letter. Emily inspected the original cipher and her work. She sucked in sharply when she saw almost immediately that James was right. She'd missed a letter. The cipher text had two ends and she'd assigned a different letter to each one, an amateur mistake. In a reassuring voice, James said, it's easy to miss stuff like that. That's why two eyes are better than one. No offense to the Cyclops. Emily's cheeks flashed with the heat of embarrassment. My eyes are fine. I've been in the car for two days, that's all. She looked at the slashing lines of James' handwritten, handwriting practically taunting, third bench down the pier. That was pretty nervy of him, solving a puzzle that clearly wasn't his to solve. If she'd wanted to help, if she wanted help with it, she would have sent it up that dinky little bucket. What a show off. She knew his friendliness was too good to be true. So, so what are you anyway, Emily demanded. A poacher? I suppose you'd want to go capture the book for me now too. James's smiling eyes turned crestfallen. What are you talking about? A poacher? What do you mean capture a book? 
He continued apologetically. The puzzle was staring up at me, chanting, solve me. His antlers seemed to droop. Even Steve seemed to droop. Poaching and capturing a book are book scavenger terms. Doesn't everyone in San Francisco play? James shook his head. I've heard of it, but I don't play. Emily gasped at James. Living in San Francisco and not playing book scavenger was like living in a chocolate factory but not eating any sweets. You obviously like puzzles. James eyed, Emily eyed James suspiciously. Don't you like to read? Sure, James said. Then you have to try it. Book scavenger is all about people who love books and puzzles and games, plus having adventures and exploring new places. What do you do? People hide their used books somewhere use books somewhere public, like a park, and then post a puzzle or a clue on the website to lead others to it. You can earn one point for each book you hide or find, or if someone finds one of your hidden books. What are the points for? The points move you up through the levels. Everyone starts at Encyclopedia Brown, and there's Nancy Drew, Sam Spade, Miss Marple, August Dupin, and Sherlock Holmes. The higher you go, the more you unlock on the website, like bonus material for different books, secret puzzles, and games. You can also trade in points to buy stuff from the Bayside Press Store. So third bench down the pier leads to a book. How do you, how do you find it from that? Books are listed on the website by location. This one is hidden at, hidden at the ferry building. There must be a pier there with benches and, for a split second, Emily paused, took in James's tilted head and concentrating eyes, and even Steve leaving, leaning forward like he wanted to hear more. Impulsively, Emily said, maybe I could show you. Want to go scavenging this weekend? The words were out there now, hanging in between them. Emily held her breath, waiting for James's response. He smiled, sure. Emily felt like she'd drunk a soda really fast, sugar buzz, but a little sick at the same time. So much for her practice avoidance of making friends she'd only have to leave. But James was good with puzzles, he'd proven that. And he was funny. Maybe he wouldn't be such a bad thing. Maybe he, it wouldn't be such a bad thing to have a book hunting partner, even if only for a while. Did you hear about Garrison Griswold? James asked. How is it possible that you don't play book scavenger, but you know who Garrison Griswold is? Emily asked. Everyone knows Garrison Griswold. I even met him in his book carnival last spring. You met him, Emily said. What's he like? What's the carnival like? She had been dying to go to the Griswold's famous San Francisco carnival since she first heard about it five years ago. Hopefully her family would still be living in San Francisco next spring. He walked around in this burgundy and blue striped suit and top hat with a matching cane. He gave me tickets for the games and every kid who goes to the carnival gets a free grab book a grab bag full of books. He really is the Willy Wonka of book publishing, Emily said with awe. It's awful what happened to him, isn't it? James said. Emily waved a hand dismissively. Him not showing up today? I'm not worried. I think his disappearance is part of the, his next big game. James tilted his head, antler, antlers jangling. You haven't heard? They just announced it. Garrison Griswold didn't disappear. He's in the hospital. Oh. And that is the end of chapter four. And I'm going to leave you guys on a cliffhanger because you know I love it. All right, that is the end of chapter four. That was so good. Emily's already made a friend, which like is kind of worrisome, but not really because you can't have too many friends. All right, I will see you guys next time for chapter five. Bye.